Hi, everybody. <laughs> Hello, everyone. And thank you, Lazy Lady Azareth, for the sub. <laughs> there, there, Your name is very hard to say. It is, yes. <laughs> Uh, why don't you guys give uh, Rhonda some love in the chat here, since we've got uh, over 100 people at this point waiting for us. Wow. So um, just uh, give her a wave, you know, give her some hype. <laughs> well, welcome her here to this to this Wednesday that you guys enjoy. Um, and couldn't make it today, and, and my plane doesn't leave for a little while, so they asked if I could fill in, and I'm like, yeah, that sounds fun. Let's we do did. That. And actually, because of her plane, uh, we are stopping abruptly right yes. at two or maybe even five minutes before cause, and that's why we had to start early too. right she has a plane to catch guys you will understand i imagine <laughs> I, I hope you understand um so with no further ado would you like to show them the giveaway yes so i i had to talk justin into it because we care about you guys yes so uh this is going to be related to what i paint today so this is the bones figure the stone golem and then the stone color triad and I'm going to use some other paints today, but you probably already have black and white and general colors. So these are great for painting stone and wolves and kind of anything you want to be a more natural gray. Like if you use a neutral gray like Misty or Stormy, or those are all great paints, but they're not great for painting natural things because there really isn't true neutral black, white, and gray in the real world. And we're giving away five of those, five sets of those. Um, and I don't think we had the giveaway set up until like just a minute or two ago. So Correct. if you were typing before the stream started, you should do your hashtag free again. Bingo. Thank you, Rhonda. You're a natural. <laughs> well, I do. I listen a lot of the times. but. And I'm sure you guys have already noticed that really, really, really awesome optimizer she's wearing right there. It's, it's purple. purple. It's, it's the new model. Uh, newer, I guess. I don't know if it's the new model. But it's uh, particularly cool. Yeah, it is, a, it, it is by OptiVisor, the company, or Dawn again, I can't remember who they are. But I think they call this one the OptiSite. And just like the OptiVisor, you can switch out the plates for different magnification strengths. Uh, and this, I have a purple one, but it comes in different colors. So if you don't like purple, I don't know why, but if you don't like purple, you can have other options. Or what a clever friend of mine did is he has different magnifications in different colors. So he knows he uses his blue one if he's working really close up and the green one for some other magnification. So I thought that was very clever of him. I may end up doing that. Metal, metal sheep says it'll be weird not having bird <laughs> with a brush in chat. I like to come and hang out with you guys. Cause I'm usually painting while Anne's painting. And then I, it's like, I'm not alone in my house where I really am alone. All right. Well, you ready to uh, show us your, your stuff there? I'm gonna yeah. Go I'm going to uh, show you guys a few of the things from the Kickstarter that I worked on. So well, I'm going to start with these rats which are not related to what I'm painting today, but since I had them out, I was painting them a little bit at the countdown party, and I've been working on them since then, and they're sort of four scale, four scale. So these are, you know, low-level adventurer nuisances, but they're, they're pretty cool sculpts, actually, and I believe they're in the Dungeon Dwellers expansion. So we'll just do a little Look at that, uh, turn around on them. Crusader actually wants to uh, get your Optivisor, so I'm going to go find the link for it. Okay. Oh, yeah. Like I said, it was going Hopefully, to I got, I got it off Amazon, and I would think it's still there. Um, I don't think they sell directly off their website. I think they just uh, they discuss their products there, so you can read more about them, but I don't think they sell them directly from their website. So these uh, cute and or plaguey-ridden looking guys are in the Dungeon Dwellers expansion. I think you get four, so I think you get two of each one. Um, so I just painted those up real quick while I was here. I'm going to put them aside now and show you kind of the... The sexy one I painted is this uh, Hydra, which is in the Greek Odyssey expansion. Well, there's her four scale, four scale. But now he's he's over the chat, so we'll put him over here. Um, and I'll do a bit of a turn on this. And he actually relates a little bit to what I wanted to paint today, because if you look at the stone, you'll notice it's not just plain grays like the stone gray triad that um, I was showing you earlier. There's a little bit of color, there's a little bit of variation. Uh, so I wanted to talk about how that's not as difficult or scary to do as it might seem like it is when you're looking at other people's work. It will take a little bit longer than uh, just straight dry brushing and washing, but it doesn't take like a ton longer. So for something that's like a showcase piece like this where you really want to impress your players or you're trying to paint something for a contest or as a gift, uh, it's, a, it's a fun technique to try. 
and I'm going to use these guys as my examples. So this is the stone golem that's currently available in the Bones line, and he's part of the giveaway. I think he's 77171, and he now has a much bigger brother. So I painted the uh, currently available one with the stone gray triad, and I did add a little bit of black to my wash and a little bit of white to the top layers of the dry brushing, uh, and just painted him with you know classic washing and dry brushing. So this this would be kind of the standard or traditional way that you would paint this figure to get him in your game really quickly. But I'm going to show an alternate way to paint some stone with a little bit of color variation on Big Brother here. So hopefully that sounds good. And then uh, after I do this first part, the paint's probably going to take a little while to dry. So I'm guessing that you guys are going to be curious about what brushes I use or some other tools that I like to use. It's always fun to see how people handle their paint and which palettes they like. So we should have some time to talk about that in between when parts are dry. I don't know if it's helpful to see Sir Four Scale. Uh, also, is diminutive I, next to both of these guys. I cannot seem to find this visor on Amazon. Um, maybe they're just out of stock right now. Okay. Um, but I'm, I'm, it's all one word. O p t i s i g h t is, I think, what it's called. Okay. And I will try to remember to put a note on my next blog post if I. If I if you don't find it, or even just maybe I'll just try to remember. Even though remembering is not like my big area. Found them. I I found them. Now what's funny is you might go on there and find that the prices are different for different colors. I actually paid a little extra for purple because that is how I feel about purple. Uh, I'm about to post the link in chat. Actually, I found it. Oh, excellent. And they're pretty comfortable to wear. I, I still have a traditional Optivisor. I've kept my like super high magnification plate in that one. Um, but it get, it's hotter, hotter to wear, especially in the summer. And it'll mess your hair up more and stuff. So I have mostly switched to this one. So I, I've got two brushes that I'm going to use. And for this part, it really doesn't matter. I probably will use the synthetic one. So this is the number two Reaper uh, Red Handle Synthetic. And this is the number two Reaper black handle uh, sable paintbrush. I might even, um, I don't think Reaper makes a size four round, but for big stuff like the Hydra or even this guy, I would probably use a number four round or a number six round. You can get them cheap at like Michael's or Joann's with the 50% off coupon that they like constantly have. Uh, so it's useful to have some bigger brushes to do base coating and um, paint bases. And I mean, for terrain, you want even bigger brushes than that. Like I don't go full ed or anything, but. No house painting brushes. But when I can use the bigger brush you can use for the job uh, that you still feel comfortable with, the better. So I'll go ahead and use this synthetic brush for right now because most of you probably have that. So why not? It's not the detail part. When I come to the part where I'm going to shade and highlight a bit, I'll try and use it more. So I'm just going to show you my palette real quick. So this is the stone gray, and I already gave him one coat with that. The downside of stone gray is it is slightly transparent which has advantages for some part when you start doing like the dry brushing or if you're layering, it's great. But when you're trying to do the base coats, then it's tedious. Um, so I will sometimes do my first coat with uh, another gray, like maybe the, the bones gray that I'm, Tempest gray or something like that. I'm blanking on the name of it that's uh, a little more opaque and then do a second coat with this. Um, so I wanted to make sure that I had full coverage because what I'm going to be doing here is I'm going to be putting this paint on, but you see, if you see all these various colors, I'm going to be dabbing those on in spots. So the idea is instead of like this, this guy's got a lot of real estate. If I just paint him all these boring grays, it's like you can see the definition, it, but it's just not that interesting. So the idea is to add some color complexity and interest. And if you look at a rock or a stone, Probably it's not just plain gray. There might be lichen that left a green stain on it, or maybe there were some minerals or uh, metals that started to dissolve from the waters and that left weird brown marks or something. So it's to simulate life and then just to make it more interesting for people to look at. And it's, this part isn't that hard at all. And I know people are afraid of introducing more interesting colors into their work. They feel like it's going to make it harder to blend or I don't know, I was afraid of doing it, and I'm not even sure I can tell you why exactly, and then I finally 
started trying to do it and it's really not as scary as it seems. So I hope that you guys will go out and give it a try. All right, so I'm just gonna, this paint is not thinned. I typically don't thin paint, fresh reaper paint out of the bottle is what I consider a good base coat consistency. Uh, and it also, a lot of time for layering, I don't even thin. So what I'm looking for is if I run the brush through, if you think of the brush like a little boat, that wake behind it, if it fills in immediately, that's thick and that's thin enough. If it doesn't fill in immediately and it's kind of the slow, you see the brush textures or it's really slow to fill in, that's when your paint's so thick that it might obscure the texture if you paint a lot of coats of that on your miniature. So as long as it's thin enough that it's going back into a blob as soon as I just right after I disturb it, that's fine to me. The reason you're going to thin paint apart from that is to control opacity, which Anne has talked a lot about if you've been watching her paint the dragon from the Dance of Death. Uh, and I'll get back into, I'm going to ask Justin to remind me to talk about ways you can control your paint for stuff like making your blending more smooth and things like that. There are sort of three things you can manipulate to control it. Let me make sure I'm on my mark so you guys can see. So I'm just going to blob it on. So with the Hydra, this is what I did. I decided since the, the tail was coiled kind of over and around a lot of the base, I'm like, you know what, let's make my life easier and paint the base first. A lot of the time I will paint the base after and then obviously I would have to be brushing carefully around where the feet or whatever part of the miniature um, meet the base. But we're painting this as if we were painting Hydra and I start with the base so I could be as sloppy as I want. It doesn't matter if I get great paint on a part I haven't painted yet. So you can see that paint hopefully is nice and shiny and wet. And then I'm just going to start blobbing on these colors. And you're going to be like, ooh, they're way too bright and intense. But you notice I'm not even rinsing my brush in between. This yellow I didn't shake, so we're not actually going to use that pool. So I'm just putting it various places. And because I'm not uh, rinsing my brush out, and you can if you, you, know, you feel like the paint's getting too glob globby or it's starting to turn gray because you've um, gone to so many colors. It's just, this is not a precise technique at all. So then, while it's still wet, while everything's still wet, I'm going to take a look. And I don't know if you can see on camera here, you can kind of see lines between the green and the yellow. So I'm just going to, I could take a little bit of gray if I want, but I don't even have to as long as the brush is a little damp. Just fuzz those edges so that the edges of where the colors are blend into where the gray is. And if I feel like, oh, that blue's just, just a little too intense, I'll take some gray, but we're going to do other stuff in later steps. Even if the color seems like a little too like, oh, that's in your face. There are, there are additional steps that are going to fade the color down a little. And that part looks too much like a wound, so I'm just going to add a little more of rust brown. So I didn't even really tell you what these colors are, and it's not that important. Uh, what I would do if I were painting this after I painted the figure is I would pick out some brighter colors that I used on the figure and use those in this step on the base because then you're tying your base and your figure together and they're going to look like they're part of the same world and that's what you always want so this is now we have a minute this paint is still very shiny we have a minute while it dries so uh, if you have any questions other than what brushes I use which I will talk about then um, get those ready so I'll start with the brushes I do use the Reaper black handled brushes um, this number two has been very good to me actually and they're really tiny brushes. Uh, if you've seen the, I didn't bring her up, but Lady Delia or Madame Delia with the green dress and it's got like a lot of little dots. And there's a couple other figures I painted that have like a lot of little dots or they have little lines. I use like the tiniest little brushes, that, the black handled brushes are like 20 zero or 40 zero. Um, it's the dots in particular, you're really, you're poking the figure and it's tough on them and I can trade sweat for brushes from Reapers. So I don't go out and buy super tiny brushes for ones that I can trade. But this brush would work as well. This is an old... Um, Proctor's also in chat, by the way. Hey, Proctor. So I guess your, your plane got there safely. <laughs> well, let's assume. <laughs> or you're driving it, who knows. Um, so little, when, when you get brushes where they're like, oh, they're just like two hairs, what are they going to do for me? You can do tiny dots and dashes with them. They're very handy. But my brush of choice is, let's see, I think I have it here. 
is a uh, Windsor Newton, either a size one or if I'm working on finer stuff, a size zero. So I like the Series 7 uh, for blending and sort of general work. I use primarily the miniature standard uh, Series 7. Uh, for freehand, I do like the miniature. So the difference between them, <laughs> you're very helpful, Proctor. Um, I, a tree that I wasn't allergic to is the kind of tree I would be. <laughs> I'd have to go do some research on what tree that would be. Um, so the, the standard has kind of a big fat belly that goes up to a little tip. So it holds a lot of paint and it's really nice for doing blending. Um, the miniature from Windsor Newton and I think Da Vinci Restauro is the name of their brush line that has a similar thing. It's a wedge shape. So the bristles are shorter and I find with a shorter bristle, you get more control. So for blending, I like a longer bristle and I like a fatter brush head than Anne likes a really thin brush head that kind of narrows down. I tend to like a fatter brush head for uh, doing layering and blending and stuff. And for fiddly stuff, I like a shorter bristle. But I would say if you can afford it or you have friends where you can kind of share between you, try different things. It can take you a while to find what you like and what you like can change over time. When I first tried the, uh, the miniature, the wedge shape, that was kind of, that was the brush that Jen Haley was using and Marika Reimer and all the people that I really admired. And I tried it and I'm like, how do they do anything with this? <laughs> so, this isn't working for me. And I put it aside for years and then like I got out that same brush for some reason and I was trying this freehand with it. And I'm like, oh, well now I love this brush. This is awesome for doing this. So, um, and it's the same with the wet palette. I, the first time I tried a wet palette, I hated it. Um, I do use this palette that Anne uses also. Uh, I use this a lot for a lot of years. Um, and I'll go back to that thing that I, mentioned to Justin to remind me about um, working with paint, particularly for layering. Uh, you can control paint like a few different ways. So one way is to control the transparency. So the more transparent your paint is, the more you can, more likely you can lay it down and not get that line where you see the layers. Um, and you get that by thinning it with water or thinning it with a medium, which I believe Anne has demonstrated on several occasions. Um, the other thing you control is how many steps. So and typically it looks like from what I'm seeing on her dragon, she'll work with like two to four steps between her darkest color and her lightest color. I typically work between seven and nine. So I'm not thinning the paint, but I've got a lot more steps in between. When I first started painting, I did both. I was thinning the paint and I had a ton of steps and that's how I got smooth blending even when I was not a very experienced painter. And then the last factor you control is your brush control. And that's how delicately can you apply the brush to the miniature? How well can you control exactly where the brush is when you lift it off? How much paint gets left behind? That sort of stuff. That's the butt in the chair factor. You can't cheat that. <laughs> uh, and so that's just time. And then that's probably also the other reason I don't have to thin my paint as much is because of that. But the other reason I wanted to show you Anne's palette is so wet palettes are great. I really don't preserve paint from session to session. I don't use wet palettes that way is to keep the paint fresh while I'm painting. If I want to preserve paint from session to session, I use Anne's palette. And I make what I call a reverse palette. So I get these sponges, which I also use to wick my brush while I'm painting. So instead of a, a paper towel, this is a damp sponge. So it's taking some of the moisture off my brush after I dip it in the paint, but it's not taking all of the paint or moisture off. And I love this thing. But uh, if I'm trying to preserve paint, so I've got my mixes like Anne is doing with her dragon. And I know I need to come back and paint more of that color the next day, or I'm going to probably have to make some repairs or something. I'll get this sponge where like if you touch it, it's going to drip like it's that wet. And I'll get two or three of them and put them over the whole surface of this. You could probably do it with paper towel too, but um, the sponges probably keep the moisture a little longer. And then depending on how arid it is where you live, you might have to check. I usually have to check once a day and, and re-wet them and occasionally add a drop of water to the, the pools. But I've kept paint this way for five days, workable, usable paint that I've gone and painted miniatures with. Um, I don't know if you guys, anyone on the chat remembers, I painted a set of five, five or six uh, black and white pulp minis for Reaper some years ago. And that's exactly how I did it. I mixed up my 
11 or 12 mixes of various, you know, black through white grays. And I used that same palette for like four days and painted three of the miniatures. And then I mixed up another set and painted the other miniatures. So um, I call it the reverse wet palette. So don't feel like you have to have one of these if you want to keep your paint from session to session. If you do want to try keeping your paint from session to session with one of these, what I've been experimenting with that I read online as a tip is uh, you may not want to put the cover completely on it. Because what I find is my paint gets too wet. It's like a terrarium or something and the moisture goes up and then it like falls back down in the paint or something. So if you leave it a little ajar and you might have to work with what the sweet spot is for your climate on what a little ajar would be that you're more likely to keep the paint workable. I just uh, take the, the little nipple dropper off my Reaper paint and just stick my brush straight down in there. I'm kidding. I don't actually do that. Because <laughs> I, I, well, you know, when I see the Reaper paint bottles, I think, man, <clears throat> I sure wish these were a lot like the GW pots. Oh, you, you like just pots? open the top, yeah. The the pots versus bottles. Uh, you listen, paint. it doesn't matter what paint it is. It would have to paint <laughs> for me for it to be uh, to be any good for me. It's the butt in the chair factor. Yes, it is. You just do it a little bit longer, you'll be fine. So is this guy seriously still a bit shiny? Well, I'll start mixing up the paint. There are some questions, I believe, oh, okay. here Let's... on the thing here. Let's see, uh, see what we got. Um, Sig Wolf says they use a wet palette when it's very dry because uh, their paint doesn't dry out while working on the mini, but the rest of the year they use the cheap plastic well palettes. Yeah, those are good. Um, what's nice about that one that Anne has is that the little wells are so small and it keeps the paint from evaporating as quickly. So I have the, like, they used to be a dollar. I think they've actually gone up to like a dollar twenty, dollar thirty. Um, just the plastic ones. And the wells are like about that big instead of about that big. And because the largest surface area, the paint evaporates faster. Um, so I, but I like to keep a few of those around and and even if you don't use a weld palette for anything else if you're doing washes and glazes those are messy if you start doing those on your wet palette the chances of that paint running into paint you're trying to use for other things uh, are high so i keep some of those around or for a little environmental tip when i open these guys up i keep this plastic and i mix my washes in there especially when i'm traveling like here i just well, throw a, some of them in my bag that's a super pro tip yeah. i didn't think about that <laughs> So recycle the cardboard and then keep the plastic to be little wash wells. What got me into painting? Um, so I used to live in Canada and I had a hobby that was like all online doing these text games and stuff. And when I moved down here, uh, I wanted something less cerebral. I wanted like a hobby with a physical element. And I thought about, I don't know, crocheting or rug hooking or stuff like that. And I'm like, I'm not that excited about the stuff at the end. <laughs> like, I don't really want to have a lot of pillows and afghans and whatnot. And, and they don't seem, they're very large as gifts. So if you give them to someone else and they don't want to have pillows and afghans, hey, Corporea. Um, so and my husband and I are both super nerdy and we'd play role playing games and other things. And I'm like, it was, uh, I didn't do muds a lot. I did mushes more than muds. So very similar now. Um, so, I think we were in the game store and we saw the Reaper Learner paint kit. And this isn't, this isn't the one the, before the one I did. This is like way, way back. They came in this cardboard box and it was $25. And I'm like, wow, that's a lot of money. I don't like, if I don't like this hobby, <laughs> which is just like a completely ridiculous statement considering how much I've spent on miniatures since that time. But um, we went to Gen Con that year for the first time ever, which we were like super excited about because we used to read about it in Dragon Magazine. We went to Gen Con and they had a paint and take. And I got to sit down and paint a miniature. And I'm like, okay, I can get in the lines. Like, this is a feasible dexterity task. This is pretty cool. I think this is going to be my hobby. And then I bought that $25 paint kit. And then, <laughs> then it just sort of went crazy from there. Um, oh, I'm excited about a lot of the Bones 5 minis. Uh, I'm going to be working on the Succubi and the Incubi. And I like painting flesh tones, so that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm less excited about wings, mostly from the assembly point of view. But assuming I can get the wings to stick, I will be uh, excited about that, too. Um, what other things? Um, I probably won't want to paint it personally, but I'm dying to see uh, how the giant turns out that has, like, the mast as a weapon. I think that that's just a genius concept, and I think the miniature is going to look amazing. Um, there's just so many cool things in Bones 5. 
So were there some other questions that I missed? Or I do not want to paint the large spider. I don't want to paint the small spider. Are you, a, are you an arachnophobe? I'm, I'm not a pro-arachnid. Let's, oh, okay. let's put it that way. Ah, I see. I see. They, they can just stay over there doing their arachnid and thing. And this new one especially is, um, listen, I've got no problem with spiders, but it is, <laughs> it's creepy. Especially just being near it. It's, it's definitely creepy. Yeah. The, the previous one, when that Kickstarter uh, was happening and I came out for the party, for some reason, Ron picked me. He's like, put the spider in your hand and take a picture so we can post it on Facebook and everybody can see how big it is. I'm like, oh, why me? Why do oh, he, I have to knew. touch the gross spider? Oh, oh he knew. <laughs> um, someone asked if you were going to post a guide for the succubi slash incubi because uh, they're looking for flesh tone tips, I think. Um. I don't know how detailed that'll be because like I try to stop now and then and take step-by-step um, -step pictures and stuff like that. But to really do the kind of thing that's like in the learn to paint kit, it's an enormous time sink to do that. Like you have to think about where to stop and where to take pictures. So what'll tend to be on my blog is more, it's like, okay, here I was for the night or I'll be like, oh, this is, would be a cool thing for people to see. So I'll remember to take a picture. But I may, I usually try to keep track of my colors. Uh, so if I do keep track of my colors, I'll be happy to share that. But it sometimes ends up being a lot of, all right, here are the colors I used. And then kind of how I mix the colors onto the gray here, what I'll be doing instead is taking colors like these and thinning them down a lot and putting them into various areas to shift things. And that part is hard to describe. So I can write the colors down and tell you, but you're going to have to experiment with that kind of thing to get something to look exactly the way that I did. Well, I don't, it's really hard to paint exactly the way anybody paints. Like it doesn't matter what your talent level is because we all do this in such a different, unique fashion, I think. All right, we're going to have to have a hair dryer up here soon. We're going to fake yeah. it and pretend that he's dry. You know, Sergio actually brought a hair dryer, dryer when we did his video. He, well, I mean, but I think he uses one regularly. I don't know how many people actually do. Um, I do. I have the only reason I have a hair dryer really is for painting stuff, and I keep it on my paint desk. Oh. Okay. Um, it's mostly base coats and things like that, but it's just like when you do want paint to dry, it seems to take forever. So, <laughs> I I do it on low uh, unless I'm trying to fix bones that are messed up. Like for for this guy, if his sword was was gunked up. You could fix that with a hair dryer on high. And I would do that even if I'd painted him. Oh. So um, I keep meaning to go update the fact thing that for the small parts, you don't have to do the boiling and everything. You can just do a uh, hair dryer. Well, I don't. If you use a heat gun, use it responsibly. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not recommending or endorsing the use of heat guns. All right. I'm going to cut to the uh, mini camera for you. Okay. So I'm going to probably switch to the brush with the better point now because I'm just used to using a brush with a better point for anything other than really pokey base stuff. But what I'll do now is start uh, layering on. And here's where the fact that the stone gray is a little um, semi-opaque or semi-transparent out of the bottle is kind of useful because it's not going to cover over all the colors that I put on. And I am going to try to get a bit of that yellow that's not gunky. So I don't necessarily mess with this a ton or I keep it very basic when I do. But if you assume a warm light source like the sun, which I was trying to paint the Hydra like he was very much in the bright Aegean sun sort of idea, then your shadows are going to have a cool tone to them. So a really simple way to implement that in painting is just add a little bit of yellow to all your highlights, or at least your top highlights, and add a little bit of blue to your lower highlights, or to your sh shadows. And I often just use blue liner in shadows for the purpose of doing that. I very rarely use true black for anything other than painting true black. And I know painters who don't even paint true black with black. But I think Anne doesn't because the dragon she's painting is black and she's using like swamp green and something or other purple, I think, isn't she? One of the uh, Bones purples. You're talking about the bruised purple? You're talking about a different purple. She's using a purple from the Bones set, I think, on oh, the, okay. on the uh, dragon. 
So hopefully he's in focus. Because Proctor was using the Bruce Purple, actually. And, Bruce uh, Purple is pretty cool. He, he loves it. I don't even think it's out yet. It is not. It has been out before, but it was uh, an out-of-print color. And I, I have a really bad... I really apologize that for that, you guys. Like, this, this Hydra, which I can share the colors of if you want, and two of the major colors <laughs> out of print. And I, like... Sometimes I try to think about it and be like, oh, people are going to want to know how to do this. But other times it's just like, those are the colors I really love, so... Come a, uh, if you could come a little further forward for me. There you go. Okay. Perfect. So I'm, I'm probably going to start with shadowing. Uh, this is like something where if you go back and forth, that's fine. Um, but he's got, he's got this really nice peck definition, so we're going to try to pull that out. And I'm using a bit of the shadowed stone uh, mixed with just a touch. Blue liner is a fairly potent color, so I just put a little bit in there. And I probably should start with just shadowed stone, but I can go back in between if I need to. But, I mean, that's a lot of overhang on his pecs, so it's going to be good and shadowed under there. And then I'm hoping that by the time I finish that, that more of the top surfaces are going to be dry. I knew it would take a minute to dry, but I didn't think it was going to be like half the show. So, I don't know how much my hand is getting in the way. Oh, you're good. This might, you're good. might be uh, better for lefties, I don't know. Also, someone commented earlier said they liked your uh, ring. Oh, thank you. I don't remember who it was. I think it was uh, Lady Azareth, actually. I think I've had this for like 25 years, maybe longer. It's a Latvian engagement ring, and I'm neither Latvian. Nor, well, I guess I'm, I'm, you know, married. Are you still engaged if you're married? Or not? <laughs> not sure what the... But it wasn't for my husband. It was just a girl in school had one, and I really liked it. So when I found some, one at a jewelry store, I bought one. So I went in and got a little more of the blue liner to make a darker shadow. And uh, it's just the best way with the light. You can kind of see that we're starting to define his muscles a little bit. But the highlighting is going to help... Um, integrate those colors so they don't look as um, blobbed on because they do look a little blobbed on right now. So if you're using a gray that's more uh, opaque, you may want to test that. So when the brush goes out of the frame, what you're not seeing is, so some people get their brush and they just dip the tiniest tippy tip into the paint. And then they maybe go like this and make sure that they got it off. Or you might come up to your miniature holder and take it off there or take it off on your finger. Um, I tend to kind of blob it in a little too much and then take it off on my sponge. And I will often still do that, particularly if it's a precision thing. This isn't as much, so I'm probably not going to do it. But um, what you want to make sure of is that you have enough paint that paint's actually going to deposit and that it's going to deposit in a smooth stroke. And if you watch some painters, like if you come to ReaperCon or some other activity where you can watch people sit and paint, just do it, like take the opportunity and do it. Like maybe don't even talk to them, just sit and watch them paint for a minute. And you will find that a lot of painters are spending more time loading and prepping the brush than they are actually applying the brush to the miniature. So that if you, especially if you're having problems working with thin paint, that may be kind of the element that you've been missing is that a lot of it relates to how much paint is on the brush and can you control that amount of paint. But since we're painting stone instead of, you know, nice human flesh or something, this doesn't have to look super precise and amazing and smooth. Like if it's a little bit rough, maybe I want to kind of skip around with my brush and have areas where the paint's applied a little more opaquely or not. Maybe I want this miniature to be dry as well. <laughs> <laughs> but I think that is a forlorn dream. It is a little damp here in Texas today. There was actual fog. There was, actually. I noticed that driving on to work this morning. There was some last night, too. And it was raining, and it's been kind of a, 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 wet, a wet You guys day. don't typically get a ton of rain, do you? Honestly, the last couple of years have Yay felt... It's felt torrential. It's felt almost Amazon-like the last couple of years. Um, typically speaking, you're right. We don't. We often have droughts, but it has not felt that way in the last two or three years. Wow, that's funny. Cause it's a lot of rain. Where I live, we call a flash flood Tuesday. Oh, wow. Wait, yeah. 
where where actually I know you said you're from Canada. What do you guys what state are you guys um, in? Um we we live in uh, Tennessee, so I live in East Tennessee near the mountains. Oh. And we get plenty of rain, but I'm pretty sure this guy would have drive there by now. <laughs> so you're saying that when I uh, take a road trip up the uh the, the east coast I can I can crash at your house, Rhonda? Thanks, Rhonda. Well we're on I, the I, other side of the No no, no it's fine. It's fine. I'll well, go out of my, if, I'll go if out you're of my on way. the east coast, you're pretty far from my house. I, I'll kinda... go I'll go on my out of my way. Okay. That's fine. It's it's within a hundred hey live I listen I live as in long Texas. As you're allergic to cats. I live in uh, Texas where, you know, DFW, if I'm gonna head to San Antonio, it's what, five hours? Whereas that's across the state for most people. I drove here twice and, and I choose not to do that again. <laughs> It was a long time. Oh. I'm not. I don't love driving though. Like six hours is kind of like eh, I'm bored with this. So, um, and this is the thing with layering. You may not have even seen very much of an effect. I mean, I think we're starting to see some highlights come up on the top of his pecs, um, and that's kind of how it works. Is you're you're building up the effect, and you have to do a little bit slowly, or you will see those lines a lot. And the paint is still so wet. I may show you the layering and I'll, I'll come like on the back of him and just show you the layering and part for a minute and then we'll see if it's dry. So I'll get some of my shadow colors here. So where I'm making things darker, I'm trying to pull the brush down to where I want it to be darkest if I can. I mean, right there is just a line. Like I wouldn't really go sideways in the little line. I'm going to go vertical. But here, I'm not, am I in focus? Yes. Okay. Here, I'm going to try and pull the brush downwards. The reason for that is that where you lift the brush away from the miniature, um, I don't know the terms for the physics, but you are leaving a little, I call it a little bloop of paint. So there's, it's microscopic, like you can't see it with your eye, but if you're going the opposite way, you're making more line with layering. So you're fighting the properties of how the brush and paint work. So if you go with it, then that's going to help you do your blending a bit better. That may be more obvious with the highlight. So we're going to do it with the highlight. So this highlight is a mix between the stone gray and the stone gray highlight, which, what do they call that? Weathered stone. Weathered stone. So I'm going to try and pull that up, his um, shoulder muscles, instead of pulling it down towards where it should be more of the mid-tone color. And this is way less awkward if you're not doing it on camera. <laughs> also, you may notice I have the guy on the holder. If you haven't been putting your guy on a holder, do that. The less you can handle the figure, and then it makes it... So if I was having trouble doing that motion, well, now I just turn him upside down, and I pull... You know, making the stroke downwards is what's most comfortable to me. I just move the miniature so that my stroke is most comfortable. You, as much as possible, should move where the figure is and be making the same gesture with your brush because that's how you build muscle memory and start to get the, the brush control that we all want so that we get the paint exactly where we want it. So there it is on the back and let's see, yeah, let's, let's put them sideways. And I think you can start to see that we're building up. It's a little brighter here and a little darker here. And so I'm going to go down a little darker again. And then I'll go up a little brighter again because I think, yeah, the shadow's dry. So by the time we do a little more shadow. So then the other element that helps with layering is I'm not going to start the same place I started before where essentially I'm having my darkest color next to the medium color. I have to pull down a little over some of the dark paint that I already put in. So I'm just going in a deeper crevice. Pull it there. It is very hard to see from this angle. Hmm. But this is when we start to realize how cool the miniatures that they've made for us are because there's all this cool detail and structure and stuff that you can't even really see until you start adding the shadows and the highlights. And then I'm going to go to a brighter level highlight. Um, I do often thin uh, highlight colors a little more. Anything that has white in it, and I believe Anne talked about in one of her streams how uh, white pigments are, the pigment itself is big. So it's not how much they grind it, it's the molecule that makes that color. Um, so whites just tend to be very opaque. 
So it's not, if you're finding you're having trouble with painting fair skinned people compared to painting medium tone or darker skinned people, one of the problems might be that you need to thin the paint a little more um, because it's got more white in it. Or highlights in general, if you find them, you know, frustrating that you're seeing the, the transition marks a lot more. So now I think we're starting to see some more definition. He's just so tall. <laughs> And I might even go like a little darker, just go for the straight blue liner, which because it is potent, um, I'm not thinning it down. It'll help you see it on camera, but I would probably advise that you thin it down a little bit. And that's just going like in little spots. And then I'll get, I mixed a little bit of yellow into the, weathered stone to do kind of that sunlight effect that I was talking about. I'm just going to apply that in a few smaller areas. Now he's got all these like cracks and things. So I would do this sort of general application first and then come back after and with a small brush and pick out, you know, add a dark line to some of the cracks and then underneath, you know, where the sun would be hitting it, add a lighter line, which if that dries, we might be able to do. But let's see if we're dry on the front. So this is what I just did on the back here is what I am trying to do over where we did the blobbed on colors for the base coat. And I don't, are, was everyone here when I did the base coat with the blobbed on colors? Is there anyone who'd like me to do a quick uh, recap of that? I guess type one, if you need me to do a recap of uh, how to make a variable color base coat. I imagine you're going to have some, some people who definitely want you to show them that. So um, I'll just briefly show. So this is kind of doing a straight color. Bunch of ones. Thing. So this is just using the Stone Grace Triad and then a little bit of black in the shadows and a little bit of white in the highlights. And this is effective and quick. If you, you know, I'm just, maybe this took me 15 minutes, 20 minutes. I'm not a fast painter. Probably took me half an hour and I'm lying to you. Um, but, you know, if you're just trying to get something on your game table really quickly, the, this is probably the choice you want to make. Uh, your players aren't going to care that much more if you do the other thing. But for the Hydra, I mean, I wanted it to go really cool because Ron really likes that mini and I really like that mini. Uh, or if you're doing something as a gift or for a display piece, this is kind of a way to just jazz up the base a little. It's not super difficult. It takes a little more time, but it's not a challenging technique. So I have a base coat of the Stone Gray on. But I'm going to go back over that. So there's lots of nice wet paint there. Then I have, let me just quickly review. I picked out some colors and I put them on my palette. If I had painted my miniature first, I would pick out colors that were on my miniature. And they are fairly bright colors, but remember we're going over them with grays again, so that tones them down. So this is to kind of simulate the idea of plants growing on it and minerals getting added. So I'm just putting my brush in those colors and just dabbing it in various areas. You could try to have a rhyme or reason to it, but you don't have to. And this is how I painted the base of the Hydra. And you don't have to color in like every section, like you can have just some gray. And then at the end of that, I'm gonna look and go, okay, I can see a sharp line between where I put that rusty color red. So I'm just gonna take the brush and kind of mix those two colors so it looks a little more natural. I'm just looking for spots where the paint didn't kind of diffuse out into the wet paint underneath. And if I have to, I can get some of the gray paint and just go along the edge a little bit. But that's it. And this is the part we've been waiting to dry since the beginning of the show. <laughs> So over on the front, oh wow, it is mostly dry. And you can already see I just did one layer of uh, shadow and highlight and it doesn't look as, because this probably looks like, wow, what's happening here? Even if you did this and you just did a black wash over it, it would integrate it in a little more. I did a, at my local hobby town, they had a Woodland Scenics guy come in once and that's actually kind of what we did. So we had, we they had like a plaster bluff and we sponged on like yellow in one section and like a 
oak, you know, ochre red or rusty red in one section, and then there was another color in another section, and we did a black wash over it, and then it like integrated and it all looked amazing. And I was like, wow, that was pretty, pretty cool. So this is kind of an adaptation of this for miniatures. I'm going to go back in a little bit with the shadow because I can see that where it was wet, the, the paint, the layers didn't all take when I was trying to show you on the wet parts. And this is why with layering, you have to wait for the paint to dry. So I do do some wet blending on the um, actual Hydra itself. Well, first I airbrushed and I didn't get it right. And then I came back in and did a lot of the scale work with wet blending, then refined it as necessary. And then the heads were layering. But I will try to talk about that a little more and I may not have written the colors down for all the parts of that, so I might not be able to share the colors. I try to keep track of my colors, partly for my own benefit, partly because I know sometimes people will ask me, but when it's really rush work on a super tight deadline, I just end up with like 50 bottles of paint on my desk and I don't always remember which part of the process the uh, paint went with. And I'm pretty sure that is what's happened with the Hydra. I'm going to go home and look at all the paint and go, okay, well, I can remember what I did the main yellow with, but that's all I got. Actually, I think I just remember what I did with the heads at this point. So that part was just me kind of trying to get to where I wanted to be in the layering before I decided it was too wet and we went and practiced on the back. So I'm going to go up a little lighter in color. And it's rock, so it doesn't have to be super precise and amazing. I mean, doing kind of a little dot thing, doing little dashes, that's going to give it texture and look better than if you were making it super smooth. I used to make my bases too smooth and they were boring and not natural looking. So not everything has to be amazing, perfect blending. So have I missed some questions? Uh, let's see here. Mostly people are talking about how uh, far they huh? How far they've draw, uh, driven to get to Reapercon, as well as uh, other times. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I'm not the farthest by a long stretch. It's just as far as I'm willing to tolerate. My husband doesn't drive, so when we drive somewhere, I have to do all the driving. Oh. He cannot see. It is for everyone's safety. Oh. <laughs> uh, speaking of which, uh, safety, uh, we have about 12 minutes left. So I don't want you to be in the middle of something and not be able to finish okay. it. Thank you. But also that means you guys have 12 minutes for hashtag free. Absolutely. Do you want to recap real That's fast? That's true for our this? latecomers. Let's, mm -hmm. let's review what we're getting. So the guy I'm painting right now, this is the stone golem that's in the core set of Bones 5. So Reaper already had a stone golem that's a little bit smaller. And he's already out for release. So to make it easy for anyone who's watching this who might want to practice, we're going to weigh that guy and then the the three stone color paints because you probably have your own bright colors or whatever you're going to want to match it to something else that you've painted so that will let you um, practice this technique if you want and we're giving away five sets nope oh, i grabbed the little guy instead of the big guy so did anyone have any more like brush palette tools, working process, any of those types of questions you wanted to ask? Get them in now. Rhonda's about to uh, fly away. Yep, back to good old Tennessee, where it probably also is raining and misty. Hmm. Uh, so there's two raffles, the uh, the sub one and then the, uh, the one for today. I'm going to uh, pull winners here in about five minutes um, and... I'll announce the names in chat, and if you get the name, if you get your name drawn, uh, you will need to email us. I'll I'll throw it to Rhonda here if she can remember. But if they win, what should they do, Rhonda? Uh, you should email ReaperLive at ReaperMini.com. Bingo. And you should also give Justin a minute because they've been giving away a lot of stuff. So it's going to take a little bit to get everything packaged up and sent out. And that too. Everybody over here is still very much recovering from the roller coaster ride that is uh, Kickstarter. So. Correct. Um, and they'll need, I'll need your Twitch username and I'll need your shipping address because I can't ship it to you without an yeah, address. They can't ship to an email. We, we wish, but that not yet. That would be yet. easy. 
Yeah, because Ron takes a long time to ship me stuff. I, I was like, send me the Hydra. I can't paint it unless you send the Hydra to me. And then he finally did. Uh, so Crispy somebody, it's scrolled now, asked, what would I do if one of the colors ended up too bright? And that is a very good question. And we'll actually go back over here to the back because if you look at, I feel like the highlighting here is a little over the top. Um, I would probably actually bring up more highlighting because contrast is good, but it gives us an example to use. So what I would do is take that stone gray color and thin it down so it's more transparent. Thanks for the Twitch Prime. So um, I'm just adding water, which Reaper paints thin excellently with water alone. I do often use the brush on sealer, uh, as Anne has talked about, or they have a wash medium now. I use that a lot too. The value of medium is if you don't like working with runny paint. Reaper does not contact you if you win. You'll see your name here, or I think it's summarized on the YouTube. Yeah, your handle will be on YouTube as a, listed as a winner, but you'll have to email the Reaper Live at ReaperMini.com. Which that'll also be listed. Um, so the value of using medium is if uh, you're really thinning stuff down and there's a chance the paint fall out of suspension. So it's particularly nice for metallic paints because the metallic flake is heavy. So when you start thinning down metallic paints even a little, it does start to uh, fall out of suspension. Um, or if you don't like working with runny paint. So I do typically use, I use brush on sealer, which essentially is glaze medium. Uh, so what brush on sealer is, is the paint part of paint. So pigment makes the color and then there's the base that they put it into. And that's the acrylic polymer. So um, brush on sealer is mostly acrylic polymer with, uh, I'm sure there's other stuff in there and Anne would know the real answer to this. But from a functional point of view, uh, it's mostly the acrylic polymer part of paint with uh, matte agent added. Which it is very important if you're using brush on sealer for this function and so if you don't want to do this, get wash medium that Reaper also makes to shake your brush on sealer every single time you use it. Um, because otherwise that matte agent may concentrate in the bottom. And when you get down to about the bottom third, there may be enough of it that you get a frosting effect. Like if you've ever sprayed with sealer and it was cloudy, it's a similar thing. And that will happen with the brush on sealer. So you just want to shake it and you want to shake it more than you would a regular paint. But I use that instead of going out to buy a purpose made medium because it's there and I use Reaper paint. So I know that that acrylic polymer is what's in all of the paints that I'm using. So it's just easier that way. You can buy glaze medium. There's other stuff you can get. There's a lot of different mediums. They all start as the acrylic polymer and then maybe you add something that makes it take longer to dry. Maybe you add something that makes it shinier or less shinier. Um, the value of using it in glazes is, is, is the paint going to fall out of suspension, which Reaper paint doesn't have a big problem with that if you only want to use water other than metallics because the flake is heavy. And do you not like working with runny paint? If you just don't like the feel of it on your brush or you find it harder to control or you're getting ring lines with your washes, that's when you should use medium. If you feel like the whole thing's a big bother and you're not having any problems, then just go on using water. There's nothing wrong with water alone. All so right. I've thinned down uh, the stone and I'm just going to go over the surface and that tones it down. And it would work the same way with the colors because it's gray. It's going to gray out the colors. Real quick while you're doing that, I'm going to draw the winners. Okay. Uh, I very rarely use an airbrush. I'm trying to use one more, but I very rarely do. Uh, so I, I'm not the correct person to answer Max Power's questions. <laughs> Hopefully the next painter that comes, ask when, when uh, Michael Proctor comes back, ask, ask him because he does paint a lot of the big guys and he does start off using airbrush to do so. Uh, I feel like there was another question I missed. Maybe it was the stuff about how you win. Yeah, so if you mean the big uh, hashtag sub thing, that will be announced a lot of different places who the winner of that, like a lot of the streams. You'll so stuff. that actually is going to get announced tomorrow on Reaper Live. At 6 p.m. Central. But if you weren't watching, how would you find out if you were uh, the winner? It would be on the YouTube channel, or you could watch the VOD on Twitch and just uh, listen for when we announced it at the end. Okay. So person typically, who was worried about that, don't worry about it. Typically, it's easier just to go to the YouTube upload and then just look at the description, because you can just read it at that point. And then if you see your handle, then there you go. 
If you don't have an airbrush, I would suggest getting uh, larger physical brushes. Like go go first. So when we start, if you weren't here when we started, I was I was using twos, but when I painted the actually I have one of the brushes I used when I was painting. So when I started off doing wet blending on the uh, the Hydra, I was using this brush, or I might use a big flat or a four or a even a six depending on the, the size. If you lost color in the highlighting process, uh, I would take those same colors and thin them down so that you're not gonna get the edges. So the same way I talked about thinning down the stone gray to tone down the colors that were too bright, thin down those colors. And you may have to thin them more because they are powerful colors. And then just kind of put them over the areas where you wanted to add color. And I do actually, so I will start some bases like this and other bases I'll paint like I painted this, I'll just paint all with the grays. In fact, we can probably quickly do that right now. And I'll just thin down some of these colors. I'm gonna announce the winners real quick while you do that. Okay. And then I just kind of dab them on. All right, so our five winners are Mini Wizard Studios, uh, Chef of Love 78, The Guillotine, uh, Joe Sirk, and Wolfguard. Those are our five winners, guys. Doing it this way, I might be uh, a little more deliberate about where I was putting them and try to concentrate like those reds and oranges that I had in the highlight areas and the greens and the blues more in shadow areas or make some other more deliberate choices. But it's a very similar process. And I, I typically do this with a lot of stuff. This is why I was saying once if someone asked me what colors I used, I can tell you the colors I used, but then telling you this part where I just swish some colors around after is harder to explain because I may not remember. I'm probably just grabbing stuff off my palette because I'm trying as much as possible to integrate everything so it looks like it's part of the same world, same lighting setup, stuff like that. So I don't know if you can see, yeah, you can see a little bit of the color. It, it looks a little more subtle on the camera than it does in person, so I will thin a bit less and do a bit more of it. And this is very much a two taste exercise. And if I, so there I see the edges a little bit. If I catch that quick with uh, the end of a damp brush, it's easy peasy to clean up. So hopefully that uh, helped answer the question of what you do when there's too much color or not enough. All right. Well, you want to give us a. Uh Sign off here, Rhonda, and tell us where we can go and find more of your stuff. Oh, um, so I have a blog online where I like to write about painting, and sometimes I'll post some pictures, kind of different steps, or give some tips like this, and that's at birdwithabrush.com. Link right there in chat. And are we doing a raid? Yes, we are going to raid. We're going to do a raid. Thanks, everyone, for coming and watching. I'm, I know you were expecting more Dance of Death, but instead you got big, tall stone guys. <laughs> So this guy is doing some sculpting. Ooh. Never read it in before. So it looks like, I don't know what he's sculpting. He's sculpting something, and he's using a wire and putty and all kinds of fun stuff. So um, That sounds fun to watch. Enjoy this. We have about nine seconds until the raid, guys. Send your uh, Reaper love. It was uh, great to see you all. You know, see. See, <laughs> Let yes. you see me. See. I don't know. <laughs> um, but be on the, the other side of the camera. I'll be back in the in the regular chat next week. Saying hi to everybody. All right, guys. Well, thank you very much, and uh, thank you, Rhonda, for coming out. Well, thanks for having me. Yes, and uh, thank you, uh, Proctor, too, for Hi, the Michael. other day in case I... Uh, yes, and Aaron. And Aaron, yes. We need to have an Aaron on next. We do need to have Aaron. She's so much fun. All right, guys. You have a, uh, you have a good night.